It's time for another To Be Tuesday recap. Hey, Tubi friends, I'm back with another recap video. For those who don't know what these Tubi Tuesday recap videos are, every month I recap my highlights and my lowlights for what I watched on Tubi this past month. And with this past month being my absolute favorite month of the year, I did 31 days of terror on Tubi. So I watched 31 movies in the 31 days of October. So I'm going to highlight and low light my top and bottom five. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of these 2B Tuesday videos or any other videos that I do. I also do Cinnaminutes and we have joint interviews, joint reviews with Jason from the History of Bad Ideas. But make sure you subscribe so you won't want to miss them. All right, it's time to recap. 31 Days of Terror on Tubi. So, like I said, I watched 31 movies in the 31 Days of October for 31 Days of Terror on Tubi. Tubi does their Terror on Tubi through the whole month of October, so I just turned it into a fun 31-day watch. I started off with the movie Gatlop on day one, and I ended with one of my favorite indie horror movies, Candy Corn, for watch number 31. But I'm going to highlight and low light my top and bottom five. So as always, I always like to start at the bottom. So we're going to give my low lights for the past month on Tubi. First on the list is a film from 2019 called Halloween at Aunt Ethel's. Everyone in town knows the story of Aunt Ethel, but do we? It's said she makes Halloween candy and pumpkin pie out of kids that trick-or-treat at her house. This Halloween, the neighborhood teens are going to find out the truth. Now, I, I didn't love this movie. Overall, I just thought it was very meh. It was very slow. Not a lot really happens in the movie. And it just, it, it didn't, it didn't click for me. It didn't work. So I cannot recommend Halloween at Aunt Ethel's for your watch list. So next on the list is from 2018. It is a movie called Pumpkins. And this was during one of our 2B Tuesday themes. Every Tuesday we do a theme of you know, some genre, something that I, that I pick and you watch at least one movie on that theme through the day. And that week we did pumpkins. And of course, why not do a movie called pumpkins? But overall, it didn't work for me. A survival experience group clash with a farmer set on revenge as they wade into his land, not knowing what awaits them and their team members. It another one just like Halloween and Ethel. It it just didn't it didn't go anywhere. It was very slow. It was dull, and I just wanted more. And so I can't I can't recommend a movie because I just I just didn't enjoy my time watching it at all. All right, next on the list is a new film from 2022 called He's Watching. And this is a found footage-esque movie. A pair of happy-go-lucky siblings left alone while their parents recover from an illness play a series of pranks on each other. And somebody else gets involved. Ooh. So this very much kind of sets up like a COVID quarantine type of thing. You know, nobody can leave their house. There are orders they can't leave the house. You know, you see scenes of their neighbors getting sick and then you don't see their neighbors anymore. Um, 
it, it, it was kind of a, a setup you would see at a beginning of a, a zombie movie more than, you know, just these kids stuck at home yelling at each other <laughs> kind of you know these these pranks start happening of this other person who is moving things around filming them and they start blaming each other for these these little things that are going on even though they're not doing it and come to find out it's someone else and i'm not usually a huge fan of like a found footage type movie but this was definitely right there at the bottom of that because it just drug and drug. I think this could have been pretty good as a short film, not so much as a feature film because it just, after a while you get to a point where you're like, all right, I get it. You guys are fighting and you don't know what's going on. Just, just move on. So I cannot recommend he's watching. So next on my low lights list is a movie from 1992. It is called Happy Hell Night. I know this film has kind of a, a, a cult following to it. 25 years ago at Winfield College, psycho priest Zachary murdered seven frat boys and was put away in the local asylum. Now, however, the same fraternity stages a prank from which... Zachary is inadvertently set free and returns to the house to repeat the crimes. Now, this had some moments that were really fun. I did not like the Zachary priest. I thought it was, he was just, I wanted more from him. He, he he would spout these one-liners, but the way it was said, it was just very, like, forced and wasn't very good. Like, they were trying to set him up as, like, this, the next slasher killer for for maybe some sequels. Like, it, it doesn't set it up that way, but it just didn't work for me. There's a young Sam Rockwell in this film, but not for very long. And it it just... It wasn't a fun watch. It was very dull. I laughed a lot of the times because there was, especially the one-liners, you just laugh at it when you're trying to, supposed to be taking it seriously or suspenseful. And I just found it cheesy and didn't have fun. So I don't recommend Happy Hell Night. So the last one on the list is definitely one I do not recommend. I absolutely hated watching this movie it's from 2015 called creature feature and it is an anthology five interwoven tales of terror that occur one foggy halloween night in georgia each of these stories just i'm just stunk i just didn't like it like i just i thought they were very poorly interconnected i thought they were very poorly done I know I'm not a filmmaker, so, but it just didn't work. I just found this movie just to be a slog to get through. I don't think it's super long, but it felt like it was five hours and I just wanted it to end. So Creature Feature is a huge, huge non-recommend for me. Let's Let's flip it around. Let's go to... The to the top. Let's go to the movies that I most enjoyed watching this past month on Tubi. And the first one is another anthology, and it's called 1031 from 2017. A Halloween treat bag of all things that go bump in the night, from mass killers to scarecrows, witches and tricksters. There's scares for everyone. Now, this was a fun anthology. I, I enjoy anthology films. And even though not every story in this was the best, but overall, I did really enjoy this movie and I thought it was a fun watch. There is a second one, part two, wasn't quite as good as this first one. And apparently there's a part three coming out, which I haven't seen yet. 
But if you like anthology films and Halloween themed anthology films, check out 1031. So the next one on my list was mentioned at the top. It's called Gatlop from 2022. Four friends get together for a nostalgic evening of fun and games after a decade absence, which takes a dark turn. Now, this movie is kind of like a darker Jumanji in a way. This game starts twisting things to to try to get dark stories out of each person. And they have to try to escape what is going on. It is just, it's funny. It was just a really, really fun watch. And I really enjoyed it and would highly recommend checking out Gatlop on Tubi. It it, is totally worth the time, especially if you like, like Jumanji, it's just a fun movie, but this is kind of like, like I said, the darker twist to it. So check out Gatlop. So then the next few on the list are ones that the rewatches ones that I love. So the, the next one is from 2005 and it's called feast trapped in a remote tavern. A group of strangers must band together for survival from a group of monsters that's outside trying to eat them. Now this is just an absolute blast of a movie. It goes by pretty quick. I think it's only 80-ish minutes, maybe. But from beginning to end, it's just, it's nonstop action, blood, monsters, gore, everything, you name it. Now, there are two sequels that came out, Feast 2 and 3, after this, that it definitely takes a, a huge turn down from the first one. But this first one was just an absolute blast. Every time I watch it, I just enjoy my time with it. So if you've never seen Feast, definitely check it out. Next on the list is one of my favorite anthology Halloween films. And it's not Trick or Treat. That Trick or Treat is my favorite. But this is up there in the top. And it's called Tales of Halloween. It's from 2015. Ghosts, Ghouls, Monsters... And the devil delight in terrorizing unsuspecting residents of a suburban neighborhood on Halloween. Now, this is just a fun movie. I think there are 10 stories in this. And they all kind of interweave in a way. Some characters you'll see kind of pop up in a background of another story. Or um, you'll see things that happen in that story that you maybe saw previously. And all the stories are just, for the most part, there are a couple that aren't as good, but most of them are really good. So overall, it's one of that's why it's one of my favorite anthology films. It's just a fun watch. Tales of Halloween. Definitely check that one out if you've never seen it. If you have, go give it a rewatch. So I know I was doing top and bottom five, but my top two kind of at a tie and one of them I didn't I've I've talked about previously I talked about it last year in my October recap and that's Candy Corn from 2019 it is my favorite indie horror movie it's Halloween weekend a group of bullies are planning their annual hazing of local outcast Jacob things go too far and then Dr. Death who is part of this traveling circus troupe brings him back and Jacob seeks revenge against the people who, who played this prank on him. I love this movie. I know there are a lot of people that aren't fans of this movie and that's fine. Everybody's not going to love the same movies. And that's what I love about movies. Some people love them. Some people dislike them, you know, but we can all get along and enjoy our love of film. And Candy corn is just one of those that just hits all the right spots for me. And it, it works for me. I really love the movie. And since it came out in 2019, like it's become a yearly watch for me on the Halloween. So if you've never seen candy corn, I've talked about candy corn many times. 
definitely go watch it. So the last one on my list is also it was tied with candy corn for score. So I still put it on, on the list. So that's why my tops have six, because I didn't want to leave one of these off. And that is from 2010, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. This movie is just an absolute blast to watch. Two hillbillies are suspected of being killers by a group of paranoid college kids camping near the duo's West Virginia cabin. As the body count climbs, so does the fear and confusion as the college kids try to seek revenge against the pair. As I'm reading that, I just start chuckling because some of the scenes are ridiculous. They're hilarious. This movie stars Alan Tudyk and Tyler Levine. And they're just perfect in these roles as Tucker and Dale. And (laughs) I don't want to give anything away and say something that I shouldn't, especially in the kills, because there's a couple particular kills that I've seen this movie countless times. And I still, I still laugh so hard when it, when, when what happens happens. So if you haven't seen Tucker and Dale versus evil, go watch it. You won't regret it. It's funny. It's fun. You'll have a blast. All right. So That will do it for another month of Tubi Tuesday recap or my 31 days of terror on Tubi. Thank you for checking this out. Make sure you follow our podcast. Go to wearethecinemaguys.com or search for The Cinema Guys anywhere you get your podcasts. Myself, Justin, The Cinemaiden, just three friends that enjoy talking movies. I'll be back next month with a brand new Tubi Tuesday recap. So... Make sure you subscribe, like I said before, so you don't miss it or any of my other videos. And like I like to say, Tuesdays aren't just for tacos. We'll see you later, everybody. Mm